friends, welcome back. I'm Elaine and I'm living with autoimmune disease. And for today's video, I am wearing my Mickey ears and my Mickey tie-dye shirt. Because today's video, I wanna share with you my six tips and tricks of doing Disney with disability, chronic illness, or autoimmune disease. These tips and tricks apply to both Disney World and Disneyland. So here we go. Number one, let's talk about Disability Access Services, also known as DAS. It is available both in Disney World and Disneyland. And at both parks, the programs look pretty much the same. DAS is a service Disney provides to those that need a little extra help with managing the park, managing your day at Disney. This is not a fast pass system. There is a misnomer that this is a jump the line system. That's not at all what it is. So my advice to you is when you enter the park on your first day, you will go to City Hall or in Disney World right now, and this is about to take place in Disneyland too, you can pre-register for this online and have this conversation that I'm about to share with you online with a cast member. The conversation with the cast member will go something like this. And this is my experience, this is how it goes for me. I go to the guest services and have the conversation that I am on immune suppressing medication, on immune compromise, I have conditions that limit my stamina and I need a little extra help sometimes, not always, because sometimes I can stand in lines and sometimes I can do a Disney day. If we're there for four days, sometimes I have a good day and some days I'm out of spoons and need some extra help. I explained to them I don't mind waiting the time of the attraction but that I need a little extra help with waiting the time outside of the line. Given that I need to sit down, I need to rest, I run out of stamina, I'm trying to do the park without a wheelchair or an ECV, and then I just need a little extra help to make it through the day. And if the time comes and I need to rent a wheelchair or an ECV that day, I will go utilize that service. But for now, is there anything that Disney can do for me to help me make it through my day a little bit easier that just gives me a chance to rest? They usually give you something like a return time pass. How this works is you will go to a cast member at his particular location and this system and service is changing. So this is accurate for Disneyland, November, 2021. You will go to a cast member at a designated location. You would tell them the attraction that you are interested in experiencing and they will say, okay, the wait right now is 60 minutes for that attraction. So it's 2 p.m. right now. We will give you a return time for that attraction at 3 p.m. You wait the time of that ride, but you are able to wait it out of the line. Now, it doesn't mean there is no line once you check in for that ride. And it's to return to that attraction anytime after the time they give you. So don't feel obligated to, oh my gosh, they gave me a return time of 3 p.m. I have to be there at 3 p.m. or I'm gonna lose this. This is not a fast pass. And they realize that sometimes things come up. You could have something medical come up. You may need to have to rest. You might have medicine you have to take. So you might not be able to appear at that exact moment. And they realize that. So you will return to the attraction at your given time and they will put you in the line further up. It's not a like, Sometimes they do feed you through the fast pass or what used to be the fast pass, um, which I think has switched over to Genie Plus or the Lightning Lane in Disney World, and you will use utilize that space. But most of the time you will just join the line where it's a little bit shorter of a wait so you don't have to wait in the big long line that was 60 minutes. Also, you can only hold one of these DAS um, at a time. So you cannot go to a cast member and say, I wanna ride Radiator Springs, I wanna ride Goofy Sky School, I wanna ride Little Mermaid, and hold all of these. You have to hold that DAS for that attraction and then go to that attraction. And once you are done with that attraction, you can ask for another return time. I should mention if you have any questions about these tips and tricks uh, while I'm going along, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I will answer to the best of my ability. 
I am not some kind of Disney aficionado. Uh, I am local to the Southern California area. So Disneyland Resort is my home park. And I would say that we visit Disneyland Resort much more often than we're at Disney World, but we are Disney geeks. So we experience both uh, parks. Number two, let's talk about wheelchairs and ECVs. We covered that a little bit in our first tips and tricks. And I said that sometimes I will need to rent one of those accessibility devices, um, but I like to try to start the day without one. Wheelchairs and ECVs at Disney parks are pretty expensive. You rent the chair at the beginning of the day. Part of that rental is a deposit on the wheelchair or ECV, uh, this applies to strollers too, that you will not get back until you return the accessibility device to Disney. So it is gonna cost you a fee, but there is a little bit more and you get that part back when you return it at the end of the day. Now. Disney prices are astronomical. Come on, we all know that about water. We know that about anything Disney. So my tips and tricks for this is a lot of private companies around the Disney parks, and this works for theme parks in general, supply ECVs and wheelchairs at a much more discounted rate than Disney. These work really well. I personally have used these for D23 Expo and things that I know that I'm gonna need an accessibility device that I do not have in my own possession. I often, every couple years, run an ECV, uh, which is a scooter, if, if you aren't familiar with that terminology, from a private company in Anaheim that I utilize for a convention that we go to. The private companies have this down to a science. You advise the private company the days that you will need your ECV or wheelchair, and they will drop it off at your hotel and have it available for you to pick up, usually from the bell desk, and utilize. I like to get the ECV the day that I check in. I check in, go to the bell desk, get my scooter, bring it up to the room, charge it, plug it in for the night, make sure it's all charged up for the park and use it for the time I'm there. The day that we're gonna check out, leave it at the bell desk, the private company picks it up. Also along this lines, I would suggest that you bring your charging cable for your ECV with you to the park. Usually these scooters have like a pocket on them, just throw it in that pocket because you never know when you're gonna run out of a charge and you might need to plug that in somewhere at the park and charge it up um, if it runs low on battery. There are plenty of plugins around Disney for you to plug in your ECV should it need a charge. I would suggest you Yelp private companies and read the reviews, let them know. I personally have left reviews on Yelp for a company that I use in Anaheim. And if you are coming to Anaheim Disneyland Resort and are curious about which company I use, leave me a comment down below. I highly would recommend them. I have used them for years. Number three, let's talk about germ control, uh, immune system problems, that kind of thing. If you have autoimmune disease, you are most likely on a immune suppressant medication. I personally take immune suppressants for my autoimmune disease and have for years. This is my tips and tricks before the pandemic. And there's one tip and trick that I've actually added since the pandemic that came to mind. Disney has a lot of high touch surfaces. We are immune compromised. We know we're at risk for infection. Um, most of us know we get sick very easily. It's a common thing in our community and we're aware of that. So besides your hand sanitizer and make sure you bring plenty of hand sanitizer with you. I always bring a little bit extra. I fill up little bottles, keep them in my bag and use them for my park stay. I bring one little bottle. It's usually just David and I, which is my husband. And we go through one little bottle of Purell a day at the park. I Purell myself after getting off each attraction. Attractions are high touch surfaces. Those little bars you have to pull down and anything you have to touch getting in and out, just think about 
all the little hands and all the people that have touched that. Disney is not wiping things down like they were during the pandemic and we have to be mindful to know that we of course need to protect ourselves and so I would highly recommend Purelling every time you get off an attraction. I keep the little bottle with me and squirt David and I's hands. We rub them together and we're good. Disney has provided hand sanitizing stations throughout the park, but you can't guarantee that it's gonna be there every time you get off an attraction. Other thing is you wanna throw some wipes in your bag. Clorox wipes, Lysol wipes, hand sanitizing wipes, just whatever kind of wipes that you can find um, lately they've been pretty like inexpensive. So just an inexpensive travel wipe with you. You can't always guarantee that Disney is going to wipe down every table for that you're going to eat at or every surface. And sometimes there's some like nasty stuff that goes on on Disney tables. Uh, I have personally seen babies being changed. So I would say before you eat, if you have not seen a cast member wipe down that surface, pull out your wipe, clean it off, you know you're good to go. My last piece of advice for this category actually was something that I started doing um, during the pandemic this year as we've returned to the parks, knowing that I'm immune compromised and knowing that I need to be a little more careful about high touch surfaces. There are three rides at Disneyland Resort that are high touch. This is Toy Story Mania, Buzz Lightyear, and Smuggler's Run and Batu. These attractions have you holding devices to interact. Toy Story Mania and Buzz Lightyear, you're holding a device where Smuggler's Run, you are a part of the attraction and you are either piloting the ship or uh, an engineer or a gunner, which you're pushing buttons. Because I have scleroderma, I often have fissures on my hands. And especially when you're using Purell hand sanitizer at the parks, your hands are gonna get really dry. Fissures are like little cuts in your skin. So I often have little cuts, they're all over. I try to super glue them, but I can't be sure that I've gotten every single little cut on my hand. Because I know that I am prone to infection and I have to keep these really clean and I can't walk around with like 20 band-aids on, uh, I have been utilizing cheap gloves. Just ones you can buy from Amazon, uh, things, gloves, disposable gloves, or if you want to be more environmentally cautious, you can get rubber gloves that you would use to wash dishes. But I slip gloves on while I am experiencing these attractions and I am able to hold the devices or pilot the ship or be an active member in the attraction. And when I am done with that ride, uh, I personally use disposable gloves, flip them off and toss them. If you have reusable gloves, I would remind you to bring a Ziploc with you, put your gloves carefully in your Ziploc um, and keep them in your bag for the next attraction that you might use them for. We have to protect ourselves and we wanna have our best Disney experience we can have. And this is a way that we are able to be an active participant in the attraction and experience Disney and have fun. Number four, well, what happens if I have to inject medication or take medication, change my feeding tube, need to lay down for a second? What do I do for that? Disney has a first aid office. This first aid office isn't only if you uh, need a Band-Aid or an alcohol wipe. This is not just a first aid office like a school nurse. This is a place you can lay down and rest should you need to rest in a quiet spot, uh, need to lay down. It's a place you can change your feeding tube. It's a place you can safely give yourself an injection, not having to do it in the bathroom. And they also have a sharps container there for you to drop your sharp into. I know often a lot of us have uh, medications we have to inject and you have your needle and you don't know what to do because you are at a theme park and although most places have sharps containers not always I will say that Disney restrooms do have sharps containers in them and you sometimes have to look because they are themed quite well I recently on my trip um, that we just got back from I realized in Batu, which for those that aren't familiar with Batu, it's it's Star Wars land 
a, they actually have themed the sharps container in the bathroom to kind of match the Batu vibe. So it's gray. So you kind of have to look for it. It is not going to be a red box with biohazard that we're used to seeing in a medical setting. It is sometimes very discreetly put in and themed, but you can always drop your sharps in the first aid office. There is a container there for you and you can always utilize that space should you need it. Along with this tip and trick i want to say don't forget to bring your medication with you whatever medication you are going to need for the day be sure you have that with you for me that is prednisone my morning medication it's the medication i need to eat and i do bring some pain medication with me just in case i get into an emergency and I am very much suffering and need a little help at that moment. I will say if you run a locker, please remember not to put your medications in that locker, especially pain medicine. Although we wanna believe that Disney people are totally upright and happy and don't want to be thieves, it is still a place that we have to be mindful not to leave our medications in a place that people may break in and steal them, especially pain medication. You don't wanna be on vacation and lose your medication and not be able to replace it. Disney will not give you grief for bringing in the medications that you need. That is not something, I know we all go through security, they go through your bag and bully me. I walk into Disney with so many medication because that's what I need to make it through my Disney day and have a great experience. I have never been questioned about the medication I'm bringing in. I also carry an EpiPen. That of course is sharp and I have never been questioned about my EpiPen. Don't feel like it's against Disney rules to bring medication in. They know that there are people in the world that need medication and believe you, I bring in a whole lot of medication. So I have prepared that way for you. Number five, since I have to take medication when I eat, let's talk about food. Disney is the most friendly when it comes to food allergies of any place I have ever been. If you share with the Disney cast member that is taking your order that you have a food allergy, they will provide you a food allergy menu and it will list on there which foods at that particular location are safe for you to eat. They have a nut-free menu, a dairy-free menu, a soy-free menu, a gluten-free menu, and I'm probably missing more, but they have menus for whatever your allergy might be. If you have some uncommon allergy, I will say that they might not have a menu for that, but if you share with them that you have that allergy, they will be certain to make sure that you are not exposed to that allergy. Disney is very friendly when it comes to food issues. I will say that I personally have a lot of eating issues, and what I do ahead of time is prepare places that I know I can eat in the park. I utilize the app. There is an app both for Disneyland Resort and Disney World Resort. These apps will provide you the eating locations of each park. And you can go on and look at the menus ahead of time and say, okay, for this day that I'm there, these are the places I can eat at. Now, you might be with people who want to eat at a place that you cannot eat at, that doesn't have anything on their menu that is maybe, in our family, we call it Elaine friendly. In that instance, have something prepared as a backup. So for me personally, on our last trip, uh, my husband, David, wanted to experience eating a Ronto wrap. My friend also wanted to, but I knew that that was something I could not eat and wasn't eating friendly. So I prepared something ahead of time and said, hey, I'm gonna grab a turkey leg. Mobile ordered it, picked it up on the way to get the Ronto wrap and was able to eat my turkey leg with them while they enjoyed the Ronto wrap and we had a nice lunch all together. If you need to bring snacks or water with you, you can totally bring those in with you. Disney is not gonna limit you from bringing water in, Gatorade in, um, any kind of snacks that you might need to have on hand. For me personally, uh, I get dehydrated a lot. I need water on me at all times, so I bring the water bottle in. I need Gatorade in order to mix my medicine, and I bring my Gatorade in, and I need to be sure to have some things I can snack on through the day, uh, if I need to take my prednisone and there's nothing readily available, I I personally bring a bag of pretzels with me. That is my go-to snack. And number six, 
I want you to have the best experience you can have. So during your day, don't forget to rest your body's gonna need it. If you're at a Disney park for more than one day, you're gonna start to run low, believe me. I also run out of spoons. I can't continue to do Disney and do Disney and do Disney. So make sure you take time to rest throughout the day. Disney has plenty of benches scattered throughout their park. I will advise you that trying to find a spot to sit near an eating location it has a bit of a challenge. You're gonna be muscling with people that are trying to find a place for their food. So please don't try to find a place to sit and rest near a eating location because that will lead to instant frustration. There are plenty of benches scattered throughout the parks that you can sit on. I often find that the Starbucks locations, all except for Disneyland, have usually places to sit around them and it's a great place to rest. I did tell you during the first aid tip that you can utilize that room, but sometimes you want to be with your party, say somebody wants to sit with you. Don't feel obligated to keep up with your healthy friends, your healthy family. We, we need to experience Disney the way that we do, and we need to make the best memory we can. And resting is not failure, that's taking care of yourself. So find yourself a spot to sit, Maybe you just need 10 minutes or 15 minutes to sit on the bench before you keep going. And that's totally fine. A little easier to do with an ECV or a wheelchair, but if you are walking it or trying to do this with a cane, it's sometimes easier to rest the 10 or 15 minutes than to keep going and totally wear yourself out. So don't forget to rest and take care of yourself. Hopefully this was helpful. If you are preparing to go to Disneyland Resort or Walt Disney World, um, I wish you the best time in the world. It is definitely one of the places that I have learned to love. If you have any questions or other tips and tricks that you would like to share, please leave a comment down below. We can all learn from each other and there's, I know there's things that I missed and maybe you can share with the people that are watching this video that might be preparing to have a Disney adventure. If you like this video and you like the tips and tricks and you like this kind of tips and tricks of travel, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you would like to know my tips and tricks of traveling just anywhere because I love to travel, that is my thing, and you would like to know some hotel hacks, Leave me a comment down below and I will film a hotel hacks video or a travel uh, tips video. But if you just want to comment, I would love to have you comment too. I love talking to you all in the comments. If you would like to come on my adventure, I would love to have you. Please feel free to subscribe. The more friends, the more better. We sometimes do fun adventures like we just did to Disneyland Resort and we sometimes do medical adventures. And until my next adventure, go have yours.